All right, welcome to day 17. Hopefully I did not lose count. I'm thinking it is day 17. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna draw. I'm gonna do a picture and I'm just gonna draw and ink it and it's gonna be a quick picture and I don't know if it's gonna work out. Or I don't know, you know, and it's just one of those, I'm just gonna have fun and draw because that's what it's all about. So let's get to the drawing. And I guess I'll say a few things as I'm drawing. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe it won't. Uh, maybe give you some wisdom. Maybe just, you know, just fuss about something. I don't know. We'll see what happens as we go. So, torso, oval, center line. This guy's going to be straight at you. I don't know if it's going to be a warrior or it's just going to be a whatever. The head, collarbone. Remember, there's that little V right here that separates where your neck kind of like sits on top of that collarbone and that neck goes right up here to your shoulder then you have your delt this one is going to be because I'm going to put his hand right here what am I doing I don't know put his hand right here one hand right here And another hand directly below, so it's going to be holding like this pole, which could be a spear or whatever, I don't know. I guess I should try to ruler it if I'm going to halfway do it right. These are kind of neat because you can, it's got the wheel on it and you can put it on the edge and you can roll it and it should stay lined up. So if I do a straight line right here, all the way down, if I don't move it. Then I could just move it over a little bit and it won't be, it should still be on that same line, shall we say. So about like that. So these are neat, but this one got busted up and fell and it got, I was cutting, you know, with my razor knife, so it got kind of tore up. So yeah, that's just how it is. So we're going to have that. So we're going to have this arm come down here. And then we're going to have this come here Brian how did you do that this is a cylinder this is a cylinder if it goes this way let me get an old an old drawing since I'm here you're gonna have this of course which is the torso you're gonna have this which is a given this is always gonna be right here or tilt it up or tilt it down then you're gonna have this or put the hand where you want to put the hand put the forearm wherever and then you're going to have this cylinder right here, this piece of cylinder. It's going to be like this, and it's going to connect, and you won't see this, and it's just a cylinder, like that. So this one's just a cylinder here. It's like this, goes back here, and it goes there, cylinder. And this is just the ball right there, connected to the collarbone, connected to the shoulder. The neck is going to be that V. When it gets to the top of this shoulder, it's going to go up. And then you're going to put the head here. The chin should come down past this here. And these are just two triangles. Like here's like kind of like tilts it to the side. So then you have that. And then I have the hand. So it's just cylinders. Cylinders. Draw cylinders. Take a day off and just draw cylinders every day, every day. All right. So we got this. We're going to have the other hand about right here. Remember what I said about hands? If you're pointing something, you know, these, these knuckles here, I don't know if these are called knuckles or joints, are going to be pointed at it. If I'm pointing something at you, these are going to be pointed. It's not going to be flat like that. I can't point a gun at you like this. This has got to wrap, this thing has got to wrap around it. Take my phone, for instance. Here's my phone. I'm going to put my hand around the phone. These joints are going to be around it, and they're going to be pointing at you if I'm pointing this phone at you. So, for the time being, let's do the square. Remembering the joints are going to be right here. So, you have your, as I say, you have your uh, delt, which is going to be a given. Let's try to pencil it. Let's just see. It's going to be a given. It's going to come right off of this, this um, collarbone. This hand is going to be here. Once you have these two points, you just have to connect them up. You know, your forearm is going to be here somewhere and that leaves the bicep 
but you just connect them and then it all should line up. It should all line up if your picture's not just all discombobulated to hell. So chest, this is this, this is the this is the that, it's the mountain. This is the house. It's the hips. It's the upside down house. And then his legs. Like that. So the head is probably going to be a little bigger. But we'll get into that later. Because I'm just going to, I'm just going to ink this. Not your traditional ink with the, I'm just going to just have fun inking it. As I say, it might come out. It might work. It might work. It might work not. It might not work. So this is just going to be the rough with the red pencil. Then I'll come in and pencil, pencil, and then I'll come in and ink. I'm not even going to pencil, pencil too much, but I want to make sure stuff is like right enough for me to to do it. And this is where I should walk away, but I'm not going to walk away because, as I said, this is just going to be kind of a, a fun thing. So I should have put that pole here or bring that hand back because there's a finger. It's going to be like this. Where's the pole, Brian? I can't see. So, yeah, that's cool. I'll just put the finger here. It's going to go around. That one joint here, the finger. The other one's going to go down. Uh, it's easier to shift the pole around than, than anything else. All right, I can't see. I really can't because this pencil is blinding me. Joint here, a knuckle here. Where's the other one? Knuckle here. Knuckle here and knuckle here. So we're going to have this. This one's going to come down. This one's going to come down too. And this one's going to come up. Where's that one? So I'll move that pole over because it's easier to do that. So this joint is going to be here, which you have to have your knuckles. And you won't see the back of that hand. So I'm going to have this. And that, and I said I wasn't going to do too much of that. Okay, let's just, just do a pencil here. Drop this down a little bit. All right, body, body. Here's the chest. Chest is going to be here, which you won't see. This is the like that. So this comes up and it's going to curve around here, and your stomach is going to be in here. Your um, it's going to come down here, oblique. Going into this, and since we're not going to do nudes, I'm going to put something on him. Have 
some space because your legs wrap around like this. You have your junk, your legs are going to be like this. So you're going to have that coming around like so. Like that. Face. Straight on face with the return face. I was going to put a helmet on the guy, make him kind of like a warrior, but. I just lost my helmet kind of room, so I won't. That line is kind of crooked, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put my eyes, my nose, my mouth. My mouth is gonna go right on these corners. Turn this off. No, keep it on for now. Always have one eye is wrong. That's just always that's been my thing for a while. One eye is always bigger, and one eye is always crooked. I'm gonna shadow the heck out of these, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm just gonna shout. I don't know how, but I'm. This is as I said. This is just drawing. This is what you should do. More. Don't worry about it coming out right. I'm not gonna frame it. I'm just gonna put it up on YouTube for the world to see. But uh, yeah. Yeah. A little more shoulder. I'm not going to walk away from it, just going to continue to draw it. The chest is here. The stomach should be like about in here. Here, so. Might be crooked, it kind of is already, but as I said, I'm just gonna draw and fix it up a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want them too bad. I want my whole reputation. My eraser. And now let's just let's just start the inking process because that was the whole purpose of this. Let's turn this off to so get away with. I'm not seeing something. Where's my pen? This is not the one. Is it on the floor? No. Here it is. I'm sorry. I got to go with this light again because I showed you earlier in another video about my glare. Glare problem. So what are we talking about? We are talking about art, I guess. What about art, Brian? Art is fun for everyone. I don't know, I feel like if I just start talking about something randomly, I'm just doing it just to do it, which probably would be. 
Uh, let me sink back into my past and see, let's say something that you guys might care about, like why did I become an artist or what, what was it about art that, yeah, that got me wanting to do this. I guess one, because I was, I was, um, I was not one of those kids that had to be around people. I think probably a lot of artists are like that. A lot of thinkers are like that. People that don't fit you, you don't, you don't, you don't hang around too much. And I enjoyed like science fiction. I enjoyed cartoons and science fiction because my mom was a cartoon person. She so that was not. It's not my fault that I'm into cartoons. She just raised me because she was into cartoons. She's not an artist. I think my grandmother was the artist in the family, but I've never seen anything she's done. So I was always a thinker. You know, I would always like write. Before I could learn how to draw, I would like, you know, imagine these stories. And then I would draw like spaceships and stuff. But because I couldn't, I couldn't really do people. So I started doing more of the ships. I had no idea what perspective was. But I, you know, kind of when I look at it, I knew it wasn't right, so I would change it around. But I wasn't really going to show anybody or put it in a gallery, so it didn't really, really matter that it wasn't. It was just me getting my idea out there so that I could have that story in my head, like on paper, to make it a little better for me. So I have a lot, and I found one of the books, and I'll show you probably within the thirty days of some of my drawings which is not much of like I said, it was more stories but it was like concept designs like some ships and tanks and stuff so i think once i really started getting into drawing because my uncle had a comic book collection and i was would like look at his books not for drawing but i just was just amazed that you know we had these characters that were doing these things and uh i just started drawing from hit there basically tracing and then once I, you know, I traced enough, I kind of knew where, what, what kind of where, what went and did the best I can to put it there. And later on, when I really, really wanted to do it, I kind of like started looking at models, like, you know, like um, in the magazines, like the, uh, it's going to sound kind of crazy, but the underwear models or whatever that didn't have like clothes on. I couldn't get, you know, the, the Playboy books and stuff because I was still young. So the best I could do was like look like the Macy's catalogs and stuff and just to see how the bodies went. And I started measuring, you know, to see where what went. And as I drew stuff, I was like, oh, this lines up with that. This lines up with that. And that's how I came up with the, the Beetle uh, concept. And then uh, I just started putting it together more and more, putting more and more stuff together, seeing how stuff lined up. And then that's how I taught myself to draw from there. And so I had no idea that comic books, when I was growing up, comic books were actually something that people would, would draw. I just thought it just, you know, came out like that. I, I had no idea. But later on when I found out, oh, people draw that stuff. So, you know, I kind of wanted to get into doing comics. So... I did the best I could because there was nobody, I didn't know what comic book paper was or, or any of that other stuff was. I just, I just drew on whatever I had. And mostly back then it was, um, what is that? Uh, um, either poster board or sketch pad stuff because you know, nobody knew what comic book paper was. So all my drawings were basically big. I would do like big, um, poster kind of drawings of eight, one character, one person standing you know, like this and a nice little gear or something. And, you know, every now and then I put like a mountain background, just something to, to give it some background. And then, you know, all the while I kept studying, you know, the anatomy, finding out how this went or how that looked. And then started to put my characters from my stories together. Like a little raggedy ruler. So that I could um, bring my characters to life. In the second here, I'm trying to line this up because this line and this line are way off. My hands are way off, so I'd have to put the pole on pencil it. I guess that would work. So I started doing my characters and then, um, 
giving them powers. And I, but I would always have complete stories. I'm talking about series, series. And uh, maybe if I live long enough and can quit my day job, then I'll actually put it together. I mean, I have like, you know, season one and season two. I mean, that's how many stories I would write with my characters. You know, and they weren't just fighting. I mean, they, these guys had problems and stuff. World, you know, problems of just, you know, just crap was happening. And people were dying around them. And, you know, which is why I don't kind of do the, you know, oh, he, he's going to fight John today or he's going to fight them. And I, you know, kind of get on people about that. You know, have, have a, a, a reason why your character fights. And I use the kind of <clears throat> the example of, um, you know, why do you go to work? You know, you go to work because you got to pay the bills. You, you need the money to to pay the bills, basically, you know, take care of life. But if you win the lottery for like $100 million tax-free, would you go to work the next day? Most people would be like, oh, hell no. No, I'm not going to work. I'm a, you know, multi-millionaire. Why would I go to work? I got what I need, so I don't have to go to work. So if you had Superman's powers, why would you, you could fly through the universe, we're talking about the super, the good Superman, not the little, sorry Superman. You could go through the universe, you know, fly to another galaxy in just, you know, a few seconds because that's how ridiculous Superman's power has gotten. Why would you stay here and fight somebody in the alley, you know, looking for something? Because like to me, when you when you think about it, it just, it makes no sense. But that's just me. That's just me. So, yeah. If I had $100 million, I would not go to work. So if I had the powers of the Silver Surfer, let's just say, for example, you think I would be on this planet long enough to have lunch? I would, I'd be out of there. I would be out of here trying to find, you know, what else is out there. So, yeah, it, it just, you know, when you got all these powers and you, oh, he's going to fight him today. For what? For what? I'm out. I'm curious. I don't want to see, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get too much into that, but yeah so and that's why i kind of like kind of got away from the superhero power stuff too much because everybody and their grandma is you know got a superhero that just oh he's you know he's this and he's that so when you look through the books of superpower people where do you go he's like, okay this one got like uh super strength and can fly and this one's got super strength and can fly and this one's got super strength and can fly. So eventually you're like, you know what? This, these guys are all the same. So there's no real reason for me to pick one up. Unless maybe he's got like pink tights or something. And I'm like, okay, well, that's different. He's got pink tights. Let me, let me, you know, get that. But everybody's like, killer this or death that. Like in the 80s, everything was blood something. Blood lust, blood, blood, blood fire, blood. You know, and they were trying to just, whatever name just sounds like, you know, terrifying you know, they would use that blood death, though. You know, just <laughs> it got, like, crazy, you know, out of hand for me. And then there was the nakedness. The women would never have clothes on. Every every female was just, you know, as just skimpy as bathing suit that you can actually put on a, a female. And then when I was young, I couldn't be drawing naked women because, you know, if I got, you know, my mom saw me or something like that, I'd be like, what? You know, so that, that you know, that's why I'm weaker at women because I don't draw them as much, but I can draw women. It's just doing it more. So I don't know what I'm gonna put on this guy. He's gonna be like a um, some kind of like a maybe an Incan kind of you know warrior Incan, 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 Incan. Whatever. He's got this on just so he won't be naked. Should I put a little belt or something? A little, little belt. If he's an Incan warrior, he would it'd be more round, like an Incan thing, coin or whatever. Round it off. Incan. Make that round. It's going to be more of a cloth kind of belt. Inca? Inca warrior? Incan? I don't know. I told you when I ink and talk, it just it just it doesn't come out. So yeah, I'm thinking about some of the questions that people would ask me about uh, comic books, and the one guy was like, um, and I wrote it down. Boy, I, I wrote a good one. 
the, the process of doing a comic because he wanted to do a comic. And for those who want to do a comic, if I can remember everything I told him, firstly, you, you get your story. You write your story. You have to have your story and you have, your, have to be able to answer your five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. Who is the person? What is he? Or what is he doing? Where is he? Uh, as in where is he in New York or um, where is he? Is he underwater? Where is he? Who, what, where, when, when, when is it like, what time is this thing going to take place? What time, you know, like, is it 1990? Is it 2.30 a.m.? You know, when is this place, when is this taking place? And why is it happening? And the why is, the good question is, as I said, why do I go to work? Why would I go to work if I have like, you know, a hundred million dollars? So for Superman, I can understand, kind of, kind of can understand Superman. Batman, you don't have to. Batman is a billionaire, and he doesn't have to. He's just, you know, just he's freaking out about that. He loves that. So, why is he doing that? So, if I have a mission, if I have to save or stop the volcano from, you know, going off, and I, I stop the volcano, you know, I'm done. My my mission is done. Why am I gonna, you know, keep uh, flying around at night trying to find, you know, somebody to help or whatever? So yeah, you gotta think about that. The whole why part. Who, what, where, when, and why. So you get your story down. You get it down packed. You get your characters your characters down. You can't just have, like, this guy, you know, I don't have a name for him or whatever. But this is go if it's going to be my main character, I need to know his name. Where was he born? What is he? He's Incan. <laughs> Incan. Yeah, okay. Um, his parents. Uh, you know, you have to know everything about him. So if you imagine yourself... Um, at work or at school, and a new new guy comes in, new new schoolmate or new worker. You'd ask some questions. Hey, how you doing? What, what's your name? Where you come from? What was your last job? You'd ask them all those questions, and that's the same thing you'd have to do to your character. Ask your question. Ask your character questions. You know, so that you can know what you you know what your character is, and does, and so forth. So, use your story, your character, your character design. I'm sure you probably have his powers. Powers have to have a flaw because nobody wants to see somebody that is just all powerful and can't be stopped. That's where your, your good story comes in is when your character is so flawed that you got to love him. You, you like feel sorry for this guy because this guy, he's just so flawed. So you got to have that. Okay, you got your character, your story. Then your drawing. Don't worry about being the greatest drawer ever because it'll come in time. The more you do it, the better you'll get. The more I ride my skateboard, the better I'll get. The more I play my piano, the better I'll get. So, you get there. Uh, yeah, it's going to take you a minute. Now, if you're doing this by yourself, if you're doing a comic book by yourself, it is going to take you a minute to get that thing done. Unless you're just so quick a drawer that you can kick out a comic book like every month or something. Other than that, yeah. So, if you're trying to do this all by yourself, and it takes you a year to put out your first comic book, and you got it, and you're happy, and you tell everybody. If it's going to take you another year to get the second comic book out, then I'm going to lose interest. Yes, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to lose interest in your, your comic book because I haven't seen it in, you know, a year. So that's something you got to figure out. Am I doing this by myself? Do I have, uh, you know, can I get some friends to help me? Are these friends reliable? Because when life gets you, you know, then life got you. You know, if you got... Uh, kids, you got a job, you got a school, you can't just do this comic book. If you're married and your, your wife don't really understand that you, you know, honey, I want to do this comic book. And she's like, you better come in here and take care of these kids. You sitting in there drawing some, you know, flying man or something. So yeah, this it's, it's a job. Doing the comic books, it's a job. It is, it's a full-time job. And if you're doing it by yourself, are you going to be able to put these books out and have them ready on time. So if you are trying to do this before you get a book out, I would have at least five, five issues ready. So in between, um, getting your book finished, you start advertising, start advertising and saying, Hey, I have this book out and start, you know, putting stuff up on social media, putting some, um, your pictures of your character up. And, you know, give them hints of the story or whatever, but put that up so that people can get hungry for that. So when you come out, they're like, oh, that's that, that's that book. That's that book that, you know, such and such was talking about. And you have it up. But as I said, if you, it's going to take you forever to get 
the next one out, then that's a waste of time. And then if you can't do it by yourself and you want somebody else to do it, that's going to cost you because my last book, it was like $500 just to have it covered. It's like I paid the guy $250 to get started, another $250 when he finished. So have I made that, up that $500 yet from doing that book? No, I have not. So, you know, but... It's something I wanted, and it's something you have to have an advertising platform. That's something else. You can't just create something and then um, let it sit on the table. If you don't advertise it, then you'll never get that money, and it's a waste. So if I got like five books out at five hundred dollars just to color it, you know, five times five, you know, two thousand five hundred dollars out of my pocket, and I'm not, you know, I'm selling the book for three to four dollars. How many books would I have to to sell to get that that money back? So you have to think about stuff like that. Is it worth it? Do you have the money to do that? You know, so the best thing for you to do is try to do it yourself. Try to do as much as you can yourself. And the one thing is practice. Just practice. Practice as much as you can. Just doing, you know, stuff like this. Just drawing and inking stuff without really caring. So as I said, advertising, and if you get it published, try to get it published at a place that um, print on demand, because if you get it published and then you have to mail the book out yourself, that's more time and money that you don't have, that you probably don't want to even try to mess with. <clears throat> so um, Kablam is what I use, but I think Kablam is like the, the main, kind of like one of the only main, the biggest one of the main one kind of. Unless I think it was a, is another one I can't think of it, but only the big boys use that because it's like really expensive. So, and that's one thing I want to do is have my own printing company for the little people to do their books, so I can print them and you know have um, a website that kind of like announces you know oh, this is the person that it's a website that continues to talk about artists and artists can come and show their stuff, and then when they get their books printed, hey the book is out and advertise it, mail list the whole nine yards. That's that's a goal that I have so. Don't know if I'll ever get it, but it's a goal I have. So I'm just putting, you know, ink to this just to play around, just to play around. I might, you know, go back later and do something, but I don't want it to be so long, but this is going to be a pretty long video because just getting started. My pen is feeling a little dry. So we have these lats that are going to be like right in here. So yeah, a comic book, and it's no guarantee that you'll make it anyway. I mean, just you, you might have the greatest thinking idea that you think is going to work and make you a million dollars, and it might make you nothing. You know, I'm hoping, you know, my, my book will take off just like everybody else. But I'm not drawing it enough. I'm not getting enough of it out to um, for somebody big enough, Hollywood or whatever, to kind of see it. So that's just something that I know that I need to um, work on, advertising. But right now, I'm trying to bless as many people as I can with, you know, showing them, oh, you can draw. You don't, you know, if you have that talent and that fire to do it, you can you can actually do it. All it is is just somebody, firstly, somebody showing you how, what to do, how to do it. Then you have plenty of reference, references on the internet, on the internet. And then just doing it every day. The more you do something, the better you, you are at it, provided you're doing it right, according to my brother. Oh, you might be doing it wrong. My brother, if you if you had ever said to yourself, oh, this Brian guy can draw, he can really draw. If you have seen my brother's stuff and he stopped, he just stopped because he went the drug route. He got hooked on the drugs and he's off now. But this man, if he had kept going, he definitely would have had an art gallery, his own art gallery, because 
I look at stuff now, and this is when we were in high school, no training. This guy, when we went, we had, both had art class together. This guy, he would just kick out some stuff, and I'm like, wow. And he had, he did some um, characters, which I have, and if I live long enough to be able to do, catch my dream, I'll bring those characters to life. Because I refined them. Because neither one of us knew what a collarbone was or anything like that. But I mean, he was close, but he just had raw, natural talent. So I guess the light is coming from this way, this direction, just to get more shadow and shade and stuff over here. And I'm just playing. I'm not trying to, like I say, just, you know, do serious hatching or nothing. I'm just playing with my pen because I can play with my pen. And there should be a shadow here. And if I went to a thicker pen, all the better. And you should be doing the same thing. Just, just as I said, draw and not really care about it. Care about it to a fact, but care about it to the, the point where you can throw it away. Because I can rip this in half and, you know, throw it in the trash and then, you know, go have uh, breakfast. And then, you know, not really care because... I'm doing this for fun, out of fun, not out of, I'm trying to show off. Where's the light is coming from that side, so this side is going to be a little darker. Set on the nose, I'm going to put it over here, go down into that mouth. And learn the planes of the face, as in planes, angles of the face where light hits it, and then you can play with a lot of lighting. As I say, I'm just playing. I have no idea, but from mistakes come perfection. What? Okay, never mind. Just a playing with the pen. What is it, 39 minutes? See, I get a little faster. Or I'll just have a part two, which is kind of a get over, but. By doing this, you can, you know, you, you vary your directions and you get your cross hatching and then you can come out with your, your, your feathering, <clears throat> your line flickering and feathering and that kind of thing like that. Because you're loose, just like the um, gesture drawings that we did not too long ago. And this is a this is a S X X X S extra small pin. Kind of wasting ink actually. So under here you have your collarbone. 
This curves around, it splits here. Get a little light there, more roundness there. These fingers. And under here. Playing around, playing around. Thicker line to make something stand out from something else. Some fabric lines. All right, what else questions have I been asked? that I haven't really went over with you over and over again. Like people ask me to draw, draw a cat or a truck or something. It's just, it's just too many of that one thing to try to even start to try to draw. So I don't, I don't, I don't put anything much into that because it's like, you know, I draw a Ford S10 and you want a, um, a Ram, you know, 150 or whatever. So, as I say, for the sake of time, I'm just kind of going fast. And definitely this is going to be the thumbnail. So I may after, you know, I don't want to go here for an hour, but you know, who knows? I'm having fun. I may do a little bit more to it. We'll see. I may just get tired and say, oh, okay, that's enough. That's enough. Day, whatever this is, day 16, 17, over. And before I call this over, I need to figure out what day it is. So fabric tucks in, where it tucks in, it's gonna make that little shadow and kind of that, that crease. The more, and I call them wrinkles, the more creases you have, the thinner the material is, so you think about that. his leg we got the muscle that comes out here so you got that one here and one there so some shadow here and because of this I said the light was on that side so we'll put it like a glimmer right here with his leg it's that one muscle that goes here Shadow and the other leg here, so I think this is part of that muscle that there is going to be shadowed anyway. Here, so it comes like this is that like V where the two muscles split? Favorite artist, favorite artist, it would have to be Jim Lee because when I stopped drawing, Jim Lee came around and I said to myself, why well, is this guy, you know, able to draw? I can draw just like this guy. And then that's when I uh, picked up the pencil and I started mimicking him because his style was like really close to, to mine. His people were like that. And I, 
I was drawing, you know, like that. So one day I said, what I'm going to do is just draw. It was that was it, I think it was a Wildcats, but Wildcats versus Cyberforce. I just drew like five pages exactly how it was on the thing. And I sent it in and I got a really good response, but no job. So, but somewhere around there, after being like turned down, I mean, I went to conventions after conventions and was, you know, turned down, you know, because I, I remember I drew something. I drew like five or six pages in pencil and I use really light pencils. Probably why I don't use pencils anymore. It was like a, 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 a H2 or something, very light. And then I, um, I couldn't photocopy it. It wouldn't photocopy. You know, I didn't know enough to try to photocopy it darker, but it just wouldn't photocopy. So I inked it and I inked it with just basic lines what is this this is from my last video i just inked it with basic line i didn't have line i didn't do any line weight. i didn't know what line weight was i just basic ink the whole thing so if i did like this the ink the inking was like this this was the inking like that so the guy you know i don't know who's the editor or whatever he said uh so uh what you want to draw or you want to ink i said i want to do a pencil i'm a penciling and he said, well, you just inked over all your penciling. So, which was true. So that, you know, I didn't get anything that day. So that's what really kind of got me. And I was like, you know what? This is not for me. And I just went home and I just gave up. I gave up because I don't know how many conventions I had went to at that point. I just gave up. I'm like, this is not for me. The hell with this. So I stopped drawing for maybe probably about a year or so, I guess. And then X-Men, you know, took off big. And then, uh, cause I still had friends that, you know, like comics and they were going to conventions, but I, I had it, I had had it. So X-Men came out and I was like, this guy's style is like mine. You know, why is he, you know, there and I'm not there. So that, like I said, I started drawing and I picked up his style. And then, uh, out of all the rejection letters I had had before, I had a good response, but as I say, it was no job. But then I started thinking, deadlines deadlines i don't want you know i don't want to be having to deal with somebody's deadlines so i was like forget it forget it i'll do my own book because everybody was like no this is not good enough one guy said oh i liked uh all my stuff but he just didn't like the way i did my eyes he just did not like my eyes. so for that reason he would not give me a shot so I'll leave his eyes white yeah I'll leave his eyes white give him that mysterious and i'm thinking Okay, dude, you like all of my stuff, but you just don't like the eyes? I can change that. So, I mean, that kind of told me, don't worry about it, Brian. Just do your own, you know. And then from there, I started doing my own. And I have like, what, one, two, three? I think about four titles now that I need to work on, which I'm not doing because I'm doing YouTube. And as I say, I always say, if you give a blessing, you get a blessing, you know, so... I look around my room and I see all these things that I have, all these, my, I started collecting airsoft guns and I started collecting nerve guns and all my little statues. If you've been with me, you've seen, you know, all my little figures and stuff that I collected. And I still got more coming. So I look at myself and I'm like, you're actually rich. If you look at it, all the books and stuff I have and the materials and stuff I keep buying and I don't have money. You know, I could, I could say, you know, my bank account is like, like this but yet I have all these things so this this blessing is not necessarily cash it's it's because if I had the cash I would buy the stuff anyway so you know the stuff is able to come I mean nobody gave me I can buy I, I'm, I'm buying this stuff but there's always money for me to buy stuff so I invest in my art now Something that, you know, like, I, I like, I bought these, and this is just happened to be sitting on my table because I'm going to do a, a, finish my video that I started on this. These are the Touch touch Twins brush markers, and I'm thinking about just adding some color to this while I, while I got it. And this is like, a, I think it was a 60 pack of these things, and this was like 200 and some dollars, you know, and then the average person, wow, man, 200 dollars, you know, but I was able to get it. I mean, my, my drawing table is, is just trashed. This has got so much because I'm doing these videos and trying to finish other videos and so forth so yeah it's like i can say oh yeah i'm rich but i'm not i'm rich with stuff but i'm not rich with cash but the cash would just end up buying more stuff so yeah but it's a blessing you know i'm getting blessed because you know i could go to um 
what's it called? What is that? The, the Udemy and the other one, Skillshare. And actually, I did videos for both of them, but I couldn't figure out how, for some reason, it wouldn't let me upload the drawings. I mean, I did a, a, a whole thing on, you know, doing comics, and I filmed all the material and told you about this and that. But for some reason, it just wouldn't let me upload it. So I said to myself, you know what? I'll just stick with YouTube. At least, you know, it's free for you guys. And then, yeah, it's free for you guys. And I don't mind drawing. I love drawing, you know, showing you guys what's up, what's new, what's, you know, whatever. So, yeah. I'm getting my blessing in, you know, ways other than, oh, he's, he's a millionaire now. I would love to be a millionaire and say that and go out and buy me a new home, which I'll get one day. But until then, you know, I'll continue to bless you guys and not say, oh, you have to pay for this knowledge. You know, you, you got to pay for this. I didn't pay for it, so why should I make you pay for it? So I learned this on my own. So I'm teaching you what I know. So don't think that I went to some art school for 20 years and, you know, I know what some of these, you know, older cats know. Like, was it uh, Pro Proco Pink Proco? Proco Pinko. You know, I kind of like his, his thing, but he's more... He's not comic books. He shows you like it's almost like he kind of like went to medical school because he'll show you how this joint connects and that joint connects. Great artist, but not comic book stuff. But you know, I look at some of these artists, and as I say, they're all great. But when it comes to teaching, they they start teaching, but they fall short because it's more like half of them just want to show you how good they draw. The other half forget that they're teaching and they, you know, they draw, 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 and then they forget the five steps that they already did. And then they want to come back and say, oh yeah, and this is how you do that. And this is how you do that. And you're like, dude, but you, how did you get to that point? It's like, I was looking at a girl do, try to teach Photoshop and she started out good, but then her cat showed up and she started talking about her cat and she did like 10, 11 steps and forgot that she was teaching. And then after like the 11 steps, she tried to come up with the 12 step. This is what you do. And I'm like, come on now, how did I even get to that point? How do I get to that point? Cause you just, you just was talking about your cat and what you feed it. And so yeah, a lot of people just don't teach. So I'm just saying what I am teaching you is what I taught myself. So, you know, you can say this guy can't do, take it with a grain of salt, but I've got a lot of people that said, you know, man, I'm, 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 I'm proving a lot just by one or two videos and this. And so, you know, I thank you guys for actually taking the time to write in to say that. That makes me feel a lot better than lets me know that I'm not wasting my time. Now, I'm just darkening one side. I might darken everything. Just you can give it a thick line. And I might just add like some gray skin tones to this with the brush tip markers. I might not, I don't know yet. I'm just finished for now. I could add like some solid blacks in here to make it pop. And I hate when people use that word, make it pop. I just don't, I don't know. I just don't like, it. I don't like that, the word make it pop, it pops, you know brings it out more. I'd rather hear that. Now I'm needing my light. So yeah, you know, if you stay with me this long, thank you for taking the time to listen to me just kind of like rattle on or talk about some stuff that you might need or might not need. And uh, yeah, as long as I can stay on YouTube, I'll be on YouTube and I'll keep teaching you. And you know, every day is something new for me because I'm like, okay, what do I teach today? What do I teach today? But usually, you know, I don't say like, just say the spirit speaks to me when I wake up, when I wake up. Something to say, oh, do this or do that. And oh, okay, because a lot of times I'll 
say, okay, I think I want to do this next week or this video and something will speak to me, spirit, call it what you want. And, you know, I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Some, maybe somebody said, oh, I need this and I wish I could find somebody to teach me that. So then I end up teaching it and then that's their blessing. So I get my blessing and I can buy my brush tip pens and my books and my uh, toys and, you know, whatever else. So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for day 17, I believe it is. It'll be, it'll pop up. If I'm wrong, it'll pop up. <clears throat> There's shadow here. So, yeah, just every now and then just draw something. You know, don't, oh, I'm going to draw this because I'm the greatest. And speaking of that, there are some people that, you know, that ask me for help. And then when I, when I, I don't criticize anything, when I correct them, a lot of artists, a lot of artists just cannot take direction. And that's one thing that I don't really like seeing artists, you know, it, they, they, they ask for uh, help or they want me to critique it. But when I say, so, okay, this could be that, or this is too fat, you know, a lot of times I don't hear from them or they'll leave a bad comment or something because they think that, you know, their art was created for them to show the world. And yeah, so for those people out there that can't take direction, you won't make it. I'm sorry. You just, you're just not going to make it. Oh, the staff is black. You need to be able to listen. If somebody says this, this is wrong, this is, you know, depending on how much they lay into you, then you can say, let me see yours. If they can't draw, then take that with a grain of salt. You know, like, okay, whatever. You can't draw. How are you telling me how to draw? But if somebody is like reputable and they got a, some good drawings out there and they say, well, your eyes are this or this is that, then, you know, listen to that person. Don't, oh, you suck. You can't do this. And, you know, there's one guy that I'm not going to get into that, but he was just, and he's got a good skills. He got, and I told him, I said, look, dude, concentrate on your skills. Stop worrying about people. But he can't get, he can't, he can't let that go. He cannot let that go. So I just like, I don't deal with that no more. I don't deal with it anymore. If I give you advice and you too stubborn or you too proud to listen to it, then, you know, you're on your own. So, did I leave space? Yes, you did. Be humble. Don't worry about what people say about your art. This is your art. If you want to draw a woman with six eyes, draw that woman with six eyes. your story you can do any kind of story it's your character you can do any kind of character you want you can do any kind of pose you want it's yours especially if you're not um showing the world you just want to do it for you do it for you to make you happy all right i don't know i may throw some color on this i don't know i might i might not so anyway i'm gonna sign this because you've never seen me i don't really sign my pictures because Signing is complete. What is it? 20, 20, 20. Like I'm going to give it away or something. So yeah, I never really draw, take pictures to completion because I don't, I don't know why. I just, I just, I don't. So yeah, that's going to be it because as I said, 